Hey guys, I am Shaft of the Clan Eats Casting Crew, and welcome to the Advanced Micro Tutorials. Today we're going to be covering unit selection. We're going to be using the foundation established in the basic micro videos, but because of overwhelming numbers of you complaining about the audio, I've gone back and redone a lot of the audio track here, which is why it took a little bit longer than anticipated, but hopefully the effort was worth it. Thanks for bearing with me, guys. Last video got over 2,500 views and front page on Reddit, so big, big shout out to r slash StarCraft for helping us get to the front page. Hopefully this video can do the same, but Without any further ado, we are going to be hopping right into these videos, but please bear in mind these are strictly unit selection. We're trying not to go into any other topics other than unit selection. So we are building on the foundation laid by previous videos in an effort to help you get to a master's level understanding of every micro situation. Thanks for joining us guys, and let me know in the comments below what you use already and what you learned from this video as well. Here's the first part. In the basic control video, we talked at length about the importance of doing a pre-split. These first few tips are actually going to re-explore those ideas. Zerg in particular really benefits from a pre-split as their units have the greatest movement speed in the game. This means hit and run tactics and winning with overwhelming odds are the key to victory with Zerg. As you can see, the Zerg is getting a very idealistic split here. And this is kind of to emphasize like Terran moving out to take like a Zelnaga tower or a forward position on the map. As you can see, the Terran has very little room to maneuver or move around with once those Lings get a good surround and lock them into place. We're going to do a, another version of this where the Zerg gets less of an ideal surround. In fact, not going for any kind of pre-split at all. And you can totally see the difference with the Terran choosing to back up and get lots of his units out of the way of those pesky, pesky Banelings. What this does is reduce the AOE damage he takes. In this next matchup, you see that the scores are heavily favoring the Terran, and we have a more realistic form of Zerg pre-split, and of course this is also assuming that the Terran takes a Zelnaga tower or a forward position, and as you can see the Terran gets some of his units away, but the Zerg still gets a great surround and good hits. This is what most of your surrounds will look like in fights, but always position for the pre-split. Next up is Magic Boxing, which takes advantage of the fact that AoE is huge against air units because they clump so well as you can see these liberators totally massacre the mutalisks but in an idealistic pre-split with a huge flock of mutas very well split disrespect is actually going to out position arkham and leaves his units completely split you can see multiple mutalisks right now not even engaging in the battle he is slowly adding these to the battle and this is slowed down quite a bit but it doesn't matter. Even at 33% speed, you can see these mutalisks are staying alive much, 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 much longer and able to do far more DPS and in fact takes out the Liberator army, as you can see, without much trouble here. And this is all due to avoiding those initial AOE shots. StarCraft is all about the initial volley and how many numbers of your opponent's units you can take out at the very, very beginning of the fight, which we're gonna go back to now. As you can see, the Mutalisks not taking those massive AOE volleys, and this is, again, just huge. In order to do this, you need to hit stop on your keyboard as your Mutalisks move across the map. Next up, we have Terran and Stutter Stepping. This is usually used to avoid high impact units like Banelings here. What Disrespect is doing in order to do this is right clicking uh, behind his marines then attack clicking right clicking and then attack clicking and this allows him to run away during the cooldown where his marines would not be able to fire due to attack speed anyway so he is using the best of that time 
Next up, we have tanking with lead units. This is most often seen in the form of marauders. As you see here, the marauders are going to absorb most of the damage here from the banelings, while the marines separate and do not take much in the form of AoE damage. This can also be done with other marines, but is much, much trickier as they have a smaller collision size. With this, he's able to kite away from the lings and, you know, he survives with at least, you know, a good three marines there. But going back to the beginning of that battle, you can see it all comes down to getting those initial marines away from the marauders as the marauders tank the AoE baneling damage. Next up, we have a small group of marines. We're highlighting them here being selected out of the larger group leaving one or two marines up front what we're going to do is move this army towards the zerg as the zerg pushes towards us we select the backward army and immediately pull them back allowing the initial marines to absorb a couple of the shots what this does is expends two banelings to kill even one marine whether that baneling kills 10 marines or just the one, it's still going to be just two banelings dead. So the idea here is to win a, Mal a Malthusian victory, uh, a Pyrrhic victory, in fact, where you are just causing your opponent to spend more resources than he actually gains. This is also done with just one unit, as you see here, and you can literally peel them away. As you see, uh, the small boxing technique from Disrespect is just individually leaving out Marines. This has to be done on the fly, where you are just identifying the easiest way to grab a clump and then what angles to move it at, but as you practice it, you will get a lot, lot better at this. Again, just understand the fundamental idea is to minimize the AoE damage. Next up, we're going to be talking about techniques with Widow Mines. There's a couple of things to remember about Widow Mines in particular. They always need to be set up before the battle, and they can do lots of damage to your own units. It takes three Banelings to kill any number of Widow Mines, so keep them split into clumps of two. And furthermore, this next example is going to show how much damage Widow Mines can do to both friendly and foe units alike. You really want to have some room to retreat with Widow Mines as they cannot kill themselves, but they can kill any other units. This is going to be a perfect pre-split for the Terran, and this is way idealistic. It's not going to happen in a real game. But if you even have a perfect pre-split, just take a look at what the Widow Mines can do. L literally takes out over half of the Terran army with a perfect pre-split. Now the Terran does win, but take a look at this other example where uh, several marines are positioned a little bit forward just like we saw in a previous technique in this video and then the other Terran units are set up to a hotkey uh, and literally just pulled back. The first set of marines absorbs most of the Widowman shots with a second series of Widowman shots taking out the back marine ranks but we can do better than this. Here, we are going to show several Widow Mines just getting in position, and then we're gonna have a slightly larger, this time five, group of Marines to hold the entire Zerg army in position. Before, a lot of the Zerg units were not able to get in position, so they ran behind to deal with the other units. This time, they have a much bigger surface area, and you can see the total difference. That is a huge number of Marines left over. Next up, we are going to Protoss. Protoss doesn't have that many micro tricks when it comes to unit selection, but one thing that Hero has proven time and time again is Blink Micro Matters. What this is, is literally just pulling back units on steroids. You have to have that perfect concave and then just pull those units back, both with Blink and just walking them backwards. But the key is really to make sure you have enough room between stalkers that your stalkers don't spend that much time running back and forth as you see here. This could have been done a little bit better but it's still a great example of what kind of impact Blink Micro would have in a battle against someone who was not using their Blink Micro effectively or at all. And as you can see, just by having the blue Protoss player rotate his damage through so many different units, the units are staying alive a lot longer and dealing far more damage and ultimately gaining a kill. As you actually saw, 
the blue Protoss had an extra stalker in this battle. In fact, in the basic micro video, I said that he had an extra stalker, but I was thinking of this battle when he actually had an extra stalker. And we're going to rewind that just so you can see there's a damn it, there's an extra stalker. I'm not crazy, I swear. <laughs> but anyways, big shout out to Arkham and disrespect you can check them out at arkham sc2 on twitter or disrespect sc2 on twitter they are members of polygon gaming and this video could not have been made without them so big props to them and thank you guys for tuning in please make sure you subscribe and like this video share it with your friends Buh bye oh what the fuck <laughs> Can I do this for real? What? <laughs> Safety platform. I didn't know I could micro all the way back here. Oh, this is so unfair. Oh, they still take forever to kill.